In this video, I'm going to have a look again at implied volatility using the bisection technique. And uh, we'll go to this file here and just have a look at where um, <coughs> uh, I saved the link to implied volatility. Um, and these are not active, so just download the file and open up. And it opens up into the OneDrive Excel Online. Uh, can be opened as um, Excel file and enable editing, enable content. And you can see the figures come live. So basically, the idea here is a relatively straightforward idea and that is um, if for instance we found that uh, the value <coughs> the value of a stock was 100 and let's say we knew that the value of the exercise on an option was also 100 and risk free rate was 5%, no dividend yield, 20% volatility, we would get a stock price equal to 1045. However, <clears throat> let's say we had observed that actually the stock price, the option price, the Black Scholes call or the, the value of the call in the market was actually 11 euros or 11 dollars as opposed to 1045. Uh, the observables in the market would typically be these variables plus the time period we could tell from the contract. So the maturity in the contract is known, dividend yield is known, risk free rate is known, uh, is known and is directly observable, but sigma is expected volatility. It may not be known. We have measures for historical volatility. Uh, but an ex ante anticipated volatility is slightly different. And let's say we have the value of the call that trades in the market for 11. How do we derive the value for, <clears throat> for the, uh, uh, the, what's the implied volatility? Well, we could use gold seek data, what if analysis, gold seek set, this cell uh, equal to a value of 11 by changing the parameter input for sigma and then that up updates to 21 and we get a value here for 11 and we can see also that uh, it's close enough also in rather than using um, Gold seek. An alternative here would be to use a VBA function and embed into the VBA function um, a bisection technique. Okay, so um, that I had done before, and uh, in this instance, in this video, I want to do something similar, except. I want to set up code in C++ for implied volatility. So if we come out of that and look for where we might find a bisection, see some C++ code, typically go to Volopta, go to C++, And uh, this site is hosted by Fabrice Rouen, and um, he has Black Scholes implied volatility. Yes, it's there. So we could have a look at that code. In the file. And I'm opening up in Visual Studio Express 2015. And you can see there is all that code is there. Okay. So 
what I plan to do is to use the same program, the same code uh, developed by Fabrice Roy in 2009, and just make some slight modifications. Uh, just implement for a single instance. Okay, and let's close down Visual Studio Express and just uh, go to where actually I adopted the code very slightly to run um, in the implied volatility estimate. So if we were to take this code and copy and set it up in Visual Studio Express okay and that takes a second and then we're starting a new project and we're going to do a win32 and a win32 console application and I'll call it implied volatility and hit OK and then next and then empty project finish and that takes uh, can take a short while and then we have here we want to enter the code we so we say source file right click add new item C++ file and again I'll just put a name on that implied volatility and hit return and paste and it's not sure if there's any issues however there's a, a red here interesting to see that okay it's just this it's just that I copied incorrectly, so I just need to put in a forward slash and the code. And that hopefully that problem resolves itself. Okay. Otherwise, everything is is as before. Now, what I could do just to understand the essence of this function is uh, identify break the function down into its separate parts so for instance we could just eliminate for the moment and I can correct this let's just take out the bisection for a moment so it's innocent to remove this code because it's independent of the black shoulds code and we can take out uh, the double and T no we need T1 um, let's take that away and we also need to get rid of the bisection algorithm and we can remove uh, the double and we just need to see out uh, actually we can move this as well so let's take that away okay that function goes and we could change this to option price And instead of having A here, we could put in the value for sigma and just check our V. So we could say same as before here. Copy. Paste. 
and we need a value for v and get rid of t and we set that we had originally set that to 0 0.2 it's a familiar value when we looked at uh, these set of parameter values here we have a value for the call equal to 1045 okay so we're hoping to emulate that and we can change this to v so hopefully some of the red v and we can remove this also okay so uh, seems to be issue free no red no sea of red here we could also remove complex we need iso stream f stream i think we can eliminate i don't think that causes an issue and i think time can go no issues include can go no issues and vector can go no issues i hope okay let's just run and see can we generate the output okay so we're we have this hit this local windows debugger and we're hoping to get okay and we get a value of 1045 so our code is actually working let's try that let's get the io manip out as well and run okay and we're still getting that result so we, we're happy with that that's consistent with what we would expect now um second part here then is we have got a value let's check again the 1045 we have here is consistent with the black Scholes model okay so if we go into the developer tab here we can see for black Scholes the value of the call using this vba function is consistent with the value so the 1045 is consistent with the value we had in the debug window of 104506 okay in the next video clip um what i will do is continue uh, from here but putting in uh, the entire code and just to note before I finish the essentially what we have here in this code is a function that estimates the value of the option black shows value we have a function we create a, f a function that estimates the normal cumulative probability using this algorithm and then in the black shows uh, formula here we call up n so if you just highlight that n you can see once i or if i come here and highlight we can see where it follows in sequence and we have snd1 e neg minus e neg of rt there's no dividend here e neg of rt k and then n and e minus sigma square root of t that's equivalent to d2 so n d2 nd1 nd2 and the function then itself we have to declare the parameter inputs and um, is it a call or is it a put if it's a call c the value of the call if the put call boolean is set equal to c we get we return a call it's this value otherwise it's a put so else using put call parity here uh, we get a put okay so it's either c if we put in p we get the value of it p and run this we get the value of the put okay 557 which i know also is correct okay so in the next video i will do the implied volatility code